Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday morning to you. Welcome back to Morning Musings. I hope you are safe. I hope you are observing the necessary protocols to keep yourself safe, you know, the social distancing and what have you. And you know what? This is an absolutely great time uh, to catch up on reading, to do some great study, to dig deeper into the Word of God. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I produce these videos like I do. Uh, I, I want to share my understanding with as many people as possible. And uh, I just appreciate so very, very much the wonderful feedback that I, that I get from you, uh, both privately and publicly. It's, it's really, really encouraging and it's very humbling. So please take advantage of this time. No, I mean, you know, the, tr the, the times are troubling, as they say. But as I've shared with you, there are some pretty positive glimmers, let's call them. Glimmers of hope, glimmers of optimism, a reason to believe that things are going to get better. And while it's absolutely horrific, and while it's frightening to a certain extent, to, to see this pandemic around the world, taking the lives of, of prominent and famous down to whoever. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty frightening. Nonetheless, for those who are in Christ, we have the absolute confidence, the assurance. You know, I was reading yesterday, and um, th this, may, this may take up my time for today, but I, I really just want to focus on a really positive message for you this morning. The Christian has a perspective that no one else in this world truly has. We, we have a perspective, we have a confidence, we have an assurance that literally no matter what happens in this world, it cannot affect who we are. It cannot affect what is ours. I would like to remind you of an incredible passage in Romans chapter 8, 31 and following. This passage was written by Paul in the midst of horrific persecutions. The Jews were persecuting him. They were persecuting the Christians. They were, they were using the Romans to persecute the Christians. Now just think about that. You're, you're being persecuted for no other reason than because you believe in Jesus. Is that right? Is that just? Is that fair? No. And let's keep in mind that in that first century, they were living in a time of incredible earthquakes throughout the Roman Empire. I, I mean, we're talking about earthquakes that killed thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people. They were living in a time of wars and rumors of wars, just as predicted by Jesus in Matthew 24. Some years ago in my research, I chronicled the occurrence of 45, at least, major military outbreaks. Now, that was everything from civil war within the Roman Empire to excursions by foreign countries trying to come into Rome. Didn't matter, 45 major military incursions and conflicts. Now, that means over a period of 40 years, there was at least one, at least one a year. They were living in a time of famine. You know, the, the historians, the Roman historians, Tacitus, Suetonius, Cassius Dio, they all tell us about famines within the city of Rome that killed 30, 40,000 people and more. And that was also spread throughout the Roman Empire. So you see, they truly were living in incredibly difficult times. By the way, on the famine, look at Acts 11, 28 and following. 
A prophet by the name of Agabus uh, predicted a famine that was about to come, and it happened in the reign of Claudius in 44 and following. So, incredibly difficult times, incredibly stressful and frightening times on, on a human level. But read with me or listen carefully to what Paul said in Romans 8, 31 and following. What shall we say to all of these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? The one who died or the one who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died and furthermore is also risen and is seated, seated at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God or the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness <clears throat> or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Look, folks, this was written during a time of horrific events going on in their world. Yet, what a song of victory. What a song of assurance. What a song of peace and comfort. Some years ago, and I've mentioned this in other videos, and some have requested more information about it. But some years ago, I produced 38 lessons on the book of Philippians. This series of lessons is entitled, No Matter What Happens. Now, where did I come up with that idea? Where did I come up with that title? Well, <clears throat> here is Paul sitting in a Roman dungeon. Now, there are three levels to Roman dungeons, generally speaking. There's the top, the middle, and the bottom, and you didn't want to be in any of them. But Paul is sitting in a Roman dungeon. He has been unjustly accused, unjustly beaten, and unjustly imprisoned. Now, listen, Paul was a Roman citizen. And according to Roman law, if you unjustly beat or imprisoned, a Roman citizen, you could be put to death. Well, the Philippian authorities did not realize Paul was a Roman citizen until they brought him out, as it were, uh, at Acts chapter 16. You know, there was an earthquake, remember? Earthquake, Matthew 24. And when Paul declared that he was a Roman citizen, it was like, oh my goodness, Oh my goodness, what have we done? And they urgently requested Paul to leave town. But nonetheless, he wrote the book of Philippians while in prison. Again, unjustly accused, unjustly beaten, unjustly imprisoned. Now, who could have a great attitude in the midst of that? Who would think, wow, this is wonderful? Well, I'm pretty sure that Paul didn't think the stale bread and whatever it was they gave him to eat, I'm pretty sure he didn't think that was really, really tasty and wonderful to eat. I'm pretty sure that he didn't think the rats that were probably that big were really wonderful pets. That's not the point. The point was that Paul had an attitude that while he was there in prison, 
it did not affect who he was and who he belonged to and what belonged to him. And that was eternal life in Jesus Christ. And so, 16 times in this little book that we call Philippians, he used the Greek word for joy 16 times. Joy, sitting in a prison. Joy, unjustly accused. Joy, unjustly beaten. Yeah, 16 times. In other words, no matter what happened to Paul, he knew who he was. He knew the one in whom he had placed his faith. I know whom I have believed and that he is able to deliver me, Paul said. What an incredible message in these times in which we are living. So, as I said, some of you have reached out to me and asked me, well, you, you keep mentioning this, but it, it's not on my website. Well, it will be very, very shortly, perhaps even by the end of the week. Uh, can't, can't be positive about that. I just mailed it off to my wonderful webmaster, Alan Morton, on Friday. So he should have it hopefully by Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, and he will get it posted on the website just as soon as possible. So if you're interested in these messages, now look, People sometimes say, well, you study prophecy all the time. What about lessons about audience or about relevance to us today? Well, you will not find messages that are more relevant to us today than the message of no matter what happens. So I thought I would take today as a break from our study of the Olivet Discourse, we'll be back on that tomorrow, just to share with you the marvelous message of Jesus Christ for those who belong to Him. And if you do not belong to Him, and if you want to know how to have that kind of assurance, feel free to contact me. I'll be glad to correspond with you and share with you on how to become a child of God and to have this kind of marvelous confidence in the world in which we live. There's literally nothing like the message, the confidence, the assurance, and the peace of Christ that passes all understanding. No, it doesn't tell us why the coronavirus comes, <clears throat> has come. It doesn't tell us why so many people are suffering. But it gives us a confidence in the midst of the uncertainty to know that no matter what happens, nothing and no one can take our salvation and our redemption and our peace and our confidence away from us. Well, thank you for joining me for this morning's morning musing. I hope you've enjoyed this wor word of encouragement, this word of exhortation. We'll get back to our study of the Olivet Discourse and specifically Matthew chapter 24 and verse 32 on the flip side. I'll see you there.